，使徒之间建模，人生为度度皆始终终神。两千零十九年七月十四，用英文开始到台湾福尔摩沙新体。好自在哈！我这个当一半和尚很困难，<笑>还好啦。It's good. I gave her some cakes that the kitchen gave to me because I don't eat a lot of cake. I don't really like sweet. Also, it make me fat. I say I eat too much already, and she says she eat more, even more. I say no problem. She don't have to be model. Yeah, I do many job. Model, modeling is one of my job. I can't eat a lot. Uh, for her, no problem. If she get fat, just buy new clothes. Huh? <laughs> yeah, for me, okay. Also, maybe if I get fat, I can design new clothes. But I don't have too much time to keep measuring, you know. <laughs> so it's better stay a little slim, <laughs> more convenient. Ah, brother from Hong Kong. Is your sister here? No, take turn this time. It's your turn. Okay. Oh, last time I forgot one story. This story is supposed to follow the、uh, story called the Afflictions by Supani in the temple. Yes, but I I probably, you know, over flap the page, so I read it for you today. This story is、uh, has a better title, a more positive title. All the hufa has a translation, yeah. Okay, one ear translation, one ear for order. Yep. Otherwise, just standing there, understand nothing, feel very boring. So you can do three jobs now. So join my club, okay? Listening, <laughs> taking order, and watching, huh? Wow, you only have three jobs. Don't complain. I have many jobs. I cannot list it all. Yeah, dogs caretaker, <laughs> house cleaner, help for for the dogs, eh, model. Designer for jewelry, wearing jewelry. Oh, I don't have time to wear jewelry, but designer for clothes,、uh, modeling for clothes. Eh,、uh, what else? A lecturer, yeah.、Uh, initiation master,、uh, a meditator, yogi, yogi. Yeah, sounds better.、Uh, what else do I have to do? Uh, uh, Sometimes、uh, as Psychological counselor, yeah. What else? Wow. Yes,、yeah, the list goes on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to scare you, <laughs> in case you want to be a master. So okay, the list we just stop here and you imagine more. Okay. Now let's go. Ha! Today I have a friend matching my clothes. Very good. Living Astikram. Remember that? That was the village. Where they call by this name, Astik Gram, meaning the village of bones. <laughs> Remember last time there was the demons who lived there, and eating people up. Whoever went there, so they call it Astik Gram. And the master Mahavira already subdued this demon, ah,、huh? and he became a good boy, yeah, <laughs> and not、uh, eating people anymore. 
in the old time, even humans in some places were eating human. In the old time, you know, it's very bad, but people were still eating people. Yeah, and now we, we, the civilized society, looked upon it as barbarous. Yeah, we don't do this anymore. Even in remote area of the world, we don't have that anymore. Well, not that we know of, because we are more civilized now. We look upon such a practice as barbarous. In soon future, we will look upon eating animal flesh also as barbarous, and pray God that it will be very, very soon. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, our world is getting better, better. Yes, and many animals' laws are being proposed or being implemented, and maybe being practiced. Yeah, yeah, a little bit somewhere, but that's already a very good step. I say they should practice it. Some governments, some nations already advocate and put it into laws. You know. To protect animals, but just one more step, then is ban altogether any killing of animals or torturing animals in uh, animal factory, for example. So I think uh, the governments of these country who who advocate animals' laws and protections are very, very uh, good already. Maybe one day they will ban altogether any form of torture or killing of any kind. Then it would be perfect. Yes, I will give that country hundreds of uh, shining world leadership award for compassion, for love, for wisdom, for uh, a hero, for whatever, <laughs> the best. <laughs> and I hope other countries also follow suit. To make more laws to protect the weak and innocent, as well as to implement it, to practice it. Otherwise, it would be hypocrite, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if I offend any of one, any of the governments or people, but it's the way it is, right? You say you protect the animals, and all the while just keep quietly condoning the practice of harassing, torturing. You know, killing, maiming animals. So what is that then, huh? I really was very reluctant to say such thing, but I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> the truth is keep coming out. <laughs> I'm in trouble all the time because of that. Even heaven just warned me two days ago. They told me <laughs> to be safe. Because I told them I don't care, and they say, "Yeah, you don't care, but you have to be safe for the world, because you still have work to do." Yeah, that makes sense, but still, I cannot help it sometimes to speak the truth, because uh, yeah, that's what it's all about, no? Democracy, freedom of speech, truth, practicing stuff like that. Okay, forget it then. Mm, for now, I guess the people who bring this regulation into law, they really want it, the nation to practice it. It just, you know, a government body is a complex system, yeah? So maybe some pro, some against. I have been tolerating everything since many decades, yeah? And because of tolerance, I have almost died many times. I have been sick, gravely ill many times, and have been uh, uh, blackened my name many times, uh, and also uh, obstructed to give you a better teaching, you know, a smoother, more inspired, and deeper teaching, yeah, because of tolerance. So I think from now on, I have been since we have this 
ashram, I have been practicing less tolerance for the sake of everyone else who are sincere, who truly take their time and have courage to come, hmm? to leave behind everything, either to work for the world or to come here to better themselves. And in our group, we have 60... I don't know. I don't have my diary here. I wrote it down. Okay, 60 plus percent are good, truly, uh, sincerely want to go home and to practice goodness and to hear the truth and try to implement the truth in their lives. Sixty some percent. I'm very, very lucky and very grateful indeed, okay? And the other, the other thirty plus percent are not so, okay? Either they just join for fun or just have nothing else to do or just shop around <laughs> or just come in to make trouble or just to like to be with the crowd. Also, maybe just to profit from uh, like good energy but not doing anything to contribute to it. On the contrary, uh, damaging it somehow, okay? So for the sake of the majority, I was since a uh, few months uh, and from now on also I will screen out as much as I can to protect the majority of people who are really worthy yeah, of heaven's grace and blessing and my time. I consider my time very, very precious. Every minute when I remember my age, I feel my time is running so fast and so precious that I can't afford to waste it just to entertain some, some anybody, some, you know, busy body or bore, boring body or bored body or obstructive body, understand? Uh, in order to protect you and my time and my practice and my work, my inside work, okay? For these people, I do not reject them outright. Just they should practice at home or in some smaller centers where they don't affect too much the outcome of your practice. And my sincere uh, dedication to offer you what I know. So, anyway, they have got initiation, they're free to do what I, they want to do with it, but they're not free to come in the big assembly and make in trouble, yeah, and ruin our atmosphere and damage your uh, practice result. You agree with that? Yes. Okay. So, do not keep telling me that this sister is good and that brother is the best and he's working diligently and he uh, always goes to group meditation. That means nothing to me if the inside has not changed for the better or not sincere. Outside is difficult to judge whether or not a person is good or not. Truly like that. Even even I was fooled many times because I also look in outside. And only until maybe I talk to that person or something happened that I have to check it out, then I know it's only outwardly look good, seems good, but the inside is still nowhere. Number one, because um, not sincere, Join in maybe because of a beautiful girl or a handsome boy or just have nothing better to do or just like to be in the crowd. You know, some people like to be in the crowd and make themselves more famous for doing something and <laughs> looking good, so it look like good, you know, for some other purposes. But not sincerely uh, here for a real thing. And they are also, just like uh, all the masters when they came 
to our planet. They give generously initiation, yeah, and offer it to the public at large without discriminating who is what, yeah, and who did what, and just giving everyone a chance to uh, to know this uh, method and then to be able to practice. But not everyone took it seriously. The same with Sekamoni Buddha, even his cousin, always tried to harm him, did nothing good, always jealous with the Buddha because the Buddha has uh, uh, many admirers, many followers, and many disciples who worship him and uh, who practice with him with all 100% faith, or um, over 100% faith and vigor. And he uh, looked like nobody followed him, maybe only his servants. Uh, maybe nobody loved him, maybe his mother does. Yeah. If he has a girlfriend, perhaps. <laughs> we never heard it, that he has any uh, family or romantic relationship. Maybe that's why he's cranky. <laughs> nobody loved him. Uh, the best place to put him is, is somewhere. So he will not harm anybody, yeah. Least of all harming the Buddha, you know, the saintly master who has nothing in his heart except to uplift the faithful, yeah, the worthy and the good people and help all the beings as well. Because uh, life after life we will have enemies. The master also no exception, yes. So you see, like Devadatta, he follow the Buddha life after life like a shadow. He never ever leave the Master alone, never. <laughs> Even after he became Buddha already, officially, the whole world knows, and he still continue making trouble. Similarly, I also have enemies. There are two kinds of people in our group. Okay. I'm not talking about you. Of course, you also have enemies and friends, and you know that, yeah? In the feng shui school, they teach you to recognize enemies, like anyone next to you always make you angry, for some time for reason or for no reason. They call them evil person, yeah? And they advise you to avoid them, if you can. But if they are your family members, then ah, good luck. There were three kinds of people who will be around you. Ah, four kinds. Yeah? The first one, luckily, if you have friends, okay? Friends doesn't mean the social uh, cycle that you are in only. It could be your family members. Oh my God, should I read the story or keep going on with my calendar? <laughs> Calendar? Okay, story won't run away, right? My calendar might, because if somebody makes trouble, then I might stop my inspiration somewhere, and then the story will get short or nothing. Yeah, it happened many times. <laughs> well, not many times, several times. Either that or the continuous story, bumpy, bumpy. Yeah. <laughs> four types of people, four types of beings, yeah? It could be also people. It could be also invisible beings. It could be also animals, uh, pets. Yeah? Okay, so now I classify it all in four types of beings, okay? Because we are all beings. Human beings, animal beings, ghost beings, or whatever beings, okay? Huh? Now, four types. What is four types? The first type is very lucky for us if we have. they call called friends. It could be your family members, your son, your husband, your wife, your sister, your brother, hey, your cousin, okay? Devadatta is not classified as friend, <laughs> even though he is a family, so-called clan member uh, of the uh, Buddha, huh? Okay? So, okay, so friend is good for you. You will notice that they are very helpful to you, very coordinate with you. Uh, you are with them smooth sailing. Of course, they are not perfect, yeah? Don't look at only their mistakes or their faults. You have to look at the big picture, okay? 
because you might be very easily mistaken with their personality. You have to watch more closely what they do for you, how you feel when you're with them, how they uh, tell you the truth for your own good, uh, but not arguing over petty things. How every time you are in trouble uh, and they are around, the trouble seems to be solved or lessened. Okay, and of course, enemy is the opposite. But it's very difficult to discern the enemies. Uh, but there are some tricks I can tell you afterward. We talk about friends first, yeah. And friends sometimes also are very protective of you. If someone else harm you, or slander you, or talking bad about you, or doing bad things to you, they are always on your side. Okay. Enemy, of course, is the opposite. Yes. Not only they don't sympathize your trouble, they even they talk to you like you are the guilty one. Make you feel even worse, like it's all your fault. Even if it's your fault, there's always take two to tango. That's what people say. Friends, they are always there when you're in trouble. Yes. And their energy will always lend you some help even though you don't know it, and they also don't know about it. But you just feel comforted when you're around them, yeah? And you too seem to get on well in many subjects. Not all subjects, not all things. Of course, nothing is perfect in this world. Even in architecture, when they build a house, they deliberately uh, make something wrong in some corner of your house, not, not dangerously wrong, it's just something not perfect, so that the house will be safe and stay long. Yeah, I guess to make it less perfect, yeah? So that the house will stay longer safe and uh, make people happy inside. That's what they believe. But of course, the house alone, the feng shui alone, is not 100% Safety proof or happy proof for you. You must have also the worth to live in there, huh? And to live a perfect and a good human life according to your merits, huh? And your goodness in your heart. Some people, even if they live in a bad house, but they are so pure, so good, so everything, even bad, become good. Actually, in our group, we should also experience that. Many years ago, when I first came to Taiwan, being a blind, deaf, and dumb <laughs> to the world, I also didn't know much about Taiwan. I uh, used to be in also kings and queens and all that. I used to do what I want, yeah? And my order will be law. <laughs> so when they say, oh, it's raining a lot, it's uh, wet for disciple, it's sunny too hot, rainy too wet, uh, Winter too cold, uh, autumn is too uh, nothing. So <laughs> we should build a little uh, roof for everyone, okay? We build a roof. And later they say, but the wind and the rain is still flying in. And they say, Master, we have to make some wall. But we didn't really make wall. Maybe it was just like plastic sheets, you know? And cover, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. But then, I don't know, uh, somebody went and uh, report it or something, and then uh, somebody else came and demolished it, yeah? The so-called meditation hall. So we had nowhere to go, we just plant more trees, <laughs> hoping that, like the Buddha, we sit under the Bodhi tree, we might become Buddha. <laughs> we plant a lot of trees, and because of many trees, it's like a forest, you know, in Sihu, right? It's like a mini forest, yeah, trees are everywhere. If you're not careful, you bump into trees all the time. <laughs> when you're in Samadhi and walking around, you be careful, okay? <laughs> and we always have to trim the trees so that it doesn't overgrow. Mm? Otherwise, we will have no more land because see who is small already. Similarly, here we also have to trim, okay? Trim some people who are not really useful, yeah? For the majority and to, for the practice of everyone else. So we trim them, just like trees. Yeah, sometimes you have to trim them, because the tree might grow too 
to far into your house and obstruct your door or your windows or taking up your space, we trim some. So at that time, we planted many trees overnight even. Uh, me and uh, the monks and nuns at that time, you know, the resident, long-term resident. And we plan also at night because sometimes we cannot wait until next day because it might be too hot and the tree will, will wither, you know, and very difficult. So it, we, we have to plan a lot because we were in a rush of time also. Uh, if we don't plan it well on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then Sunday people cannot come because of the heap of dirt everywhere and trees are laying down everywhere or topside everywhere is also dangerous for the children and the holes everywhere on the ground is not safe. So we hurry, hurry, so we plan sometimes all night through. And because many trees, we call it a uh, holy forest, big hall, shen ling da dian, eh, words by word translated like that. Actually, Ta Tien is mean the place where you gather to meditate, to listen to master lecture. Uh, so they call Ta Tien. You know? Even in, in the temple, they call it Ta Tien, mean where the Buddha statues are placed and people come to worship or meditate if they do, or listen to the abbot speaking if he does. Yeah, so we call it Ta Tien also. Actually, there's no Tien. <laughs> Ta Tien <laughs> means a big. Big hall, you know, the hall is normally has the roof and the walls around it. Yeah, meditation hall or any hall like that. Just we had no hall at all. They still nostalgic from the old time when they still had the uh, little uh, meditation hall before. It made uh, of simple stuff like a sheet of metal. At that time, I didn't have a lot of money because I did not do any designing or modeling yet. I didn't think about that, yeah. And then uh, we just used, you know, very uh, inexpensive material just to cover for the sun and the, and the rain. But later it's demolished. We plant trees instead, yeah. We were just a group of practitioners, didn't know much about, about the a building a regulation and stuff like that. We thought, oh, it's necessary to build, so we built. And I thought the Taiwanese people know what to do. <laughs> and the Taiwanese people think Master knows everything. <laughs> Master knows what to do, so okay, we build. <laughs> Later, uh, we know better, you know, we have to uh, apply first for permission. Nevertheless, we already plant trees. Very difficult to dig them out. They're growing, growing everywhere already. So we call them a uh, holy forest, meditation hall. And just now they dig out one of the ancient prediction and one of the seer, he mentioned about, about our holy forest. And I said, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so that means anything happens has a good reason. And I had to wait 30 some years to see it. <laughs> we, we all did. We all had to wait for 30 some years to see the, the reason why somebody came and demolished our so called meditation hall before. And then we have a forest, holy forest meditation hall, which fit perfectly in the, uh, the big plan of the universe. Yeah, we shouldn't have built that hall in any case. <laughs> and but I remember now, I don't know if they still have these tapes that I was talking to the residents at that time, because they were so upset that somebody was going to demolish their house. They're not really attached. They thought it's a place, the holy place, where people came and meditate, you know, for the disciples. And why do people even come and do that? And they were thinking they're coming now and lady on the street you know, to stop the bulldozer to come, to demolish the hall. So I was laughing, I talked to them laughingly, saying, oh, somebody really want to use a human skin to, to protect the uh, uh, metal skin, <laughs> because uh, the metal sheet, uh, in Chinese, I say, you are using uh, 人皮的. 
人皮，为了保护铁皮呀、啊。<laughs> I remember saying that, but the more I don't remember, I just comfort them, and then make them laugh so much that we all laugh, and then so we didn't care anymore whether or not、uh, it's going to demolish or not. Yeah, yeah. So it was like that. These are tapes probably are never published. Because it's just for the residents, and we just talk about this incident only.、Uh, nothing, I mean, nothing much. Well, maybe it could be some、uh, some lessons in it, yeah. But we didn't think. I didn't let them publish. I didn't think it's something to publish. I maybe one day they would dig it out. <laughs> yeah, because these、uh, SM TV people, Supreme Master Television and stuff, they are so good. They dig out everything. They dig out many of the photos that I never thought I had. <laughs> They dig out some of the talk that I never thought I even have spoken, and they dig out so many ancient predictions that I never heard of, <laughs> even many other lifetimes. <laughs> yeah, they keep digging, digging. Wow,、oh, my God! And I also the first time seeing this. I told you the only predictions I. I know a little bit, not the whole thing, because it's very famous in France. I was in France, you know, and I was study French, so I knew some because people tell me. But I wasn't, you know, anything wiser because I wasn't practicing anything. Yeah, so I didn't know anything anyway. So they read it and I hear it, and then they go from here to the other ear. I said, that's the only person I knew about prediction in my whole life. <laughs> And then now they're digging out so many, oh, from Europe to America, and then now South America, and then to Vietnam and、uh, Korea and what not. I don't know. I'm also <laughs> like you, <laughs> very excited, and, you know, waiting to see what else they can dig out for, from the treasure of the world.、Huh? So now when I see this prediction, I thought, wow, so it fit perfectly. Maybe that's what it's meant to be. Lucky I didn't let the resident come out and lay in on the street <laughs> to do the protest. Cause the bulldozer, maybe he doesn't know anything about ahimsa, no?、Nah? Yeah, it could cause some problem, no?、Nah? <laughs> Humans might know, but the bulldozer is just a machine. You know nothing about the five precepts, yeah? And you don't provoke that big, strong, powerful, mindless guy. Besides, you know, whatever happened, happened. You know, that's my philosophy. Whatever happens, happens. You just accept it, and maybe something good come out of it at the end. Maybe you have to wait forever, but who cares? Who cares? That's the way it has to be. Then it has to be. So we learn a lot also from Lord Mahavira here that he accepted everything. Because maybe his soul knew that this is good for humanity, for hu-、uh, all beings, or his soul also remember maybe in the past lives when he he was、uh, sojourning、uh, on this planet, maybe he also did something not appropriate, and now it's his turn to reap this、uh, consequence. Even the Sakyamuni Buddha say that he was kicking the head of a dead fish. Then he had headache for some times, even after he became Buddha already. We are born in this human、uh, body, and we are not allowed to know many things. Therefore, a lot of times we do wrong, and without realizing it, especially without anyone teaching us in advance, without a wise teacher to tell us what's right from wrong. And even then, if somebody taught us, sometimes we still can do wrong because the mind and the Maya pushing it, and our karmic background from lives coming back, also、uh, leading us astray, you now making us do things wrong. All the situation force us to do something that we don't like to do, but we just. Have to. Therefore, all beings are really, really pitiful, very, very pitiful indeed. 
But in the Christi Gaba Sutra, Titang Wang Jing, uh, remember all the Bodhisattvas and the Buddhas warning us that the Bodhisattvas have always been there to help us all the time, even lifting us away from hell if we were repentant and sincere and given another chance to redeem our mistakes. Some still do it again. Because habits die hard, even habit from former lives still coming back, haunting our subconsciousness. So try to resist mightily whatever we think is not good. Because the Buddhas and the Bodhisattva warn us that if after we have been redeemed and given another chance, and if we do bad again, if it's too grievously bad, then we be in hell forever. No one can help us anymore. Remember that? Yes. Well, <laughs> they say no one, uh, meaning uh, mostly, <laughs> mostly. Maybe there's one or two mighty saints could help us. Yeah, but that took long, 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 long eons, cow bars, until this person or this being came down to this planet and help us in that situation. I mean, help once and for all, for good. But then we still had to suffer a long time already, like forever. In the old saying, they say, one day in prison is it's like three years outside in freedom. Okay, in hell, imagine all the suffering and the punishment and the, the pain and sorrow, no end, no end. Imagine how long will that seem, even though it's already like cow pass or Ian's pass already. Kapish? Sometimes bad things happen to us, it's to lead to a better thing. Sometimes we lost something, but then we will be given something better. Yes? Like in Sihu, uh, we had problem, we cannot build there. And then you cannot meditate there. Yeah. Also, you build some uh, things right in front of my cave. Yeah. Suffocating me. When I came back, I had nowhere to walk. If I walk out, I have to bump into your nose right away. How can I breathe like that? Yeah. And you had everything already. The whole ashram are yours. I have only that little, maybe 20 square meters that I call uh, home. <laughs> And you had to build something, you know, solidly with metal frame and everything right in front of my cave. So I demolish it and tell you, you cannot go up there anymore. And some of you are angry with me, I know. But the right thing is the right thing, okay? Wrong is wrong, okay? You cannot go and just like some place and then just uh, take it. We like many things in life, but we cannot just take it. If it's not appropriate, we have to always consider other people before ourselves. Maybe I could bear it, but I don't want you to continue behaving in such an uh, inappropriate manner, huh? And causing bad karma, bad example for others to follow, okay? Even if I don't ever live there anymore, or I don't need that anymore, you shouldn't have done that, okay? And then you were sad, you were mad, and some are cursing me with poisonous uh, mantra, whatever, incantation. Mantra is a better thing. Mantra is only for good teaching from the Buddha. Incantation. And uh, make trouble for me. Yeah. And then almost fall to hell. If I didn't help, that person would never go back to human life or, um, or never see the sun ever again for many cowboys to come. But then, after that, you have this land. It cost me a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more than that little 20 square meters of mine. There wasn't land there, we had to level it. It was a mountain like this, and we had to make some level in order to have just a little square like that for me. But in my cave, I did not level. I told them to build it just in, in the mountain. Without, without destroying any natural landscape. So now, you see, you lost that little <laughs> tent. 
But now you have a bigger tent and more comfortable here. Okay? For example, okay? This is an example. Because example is uh, louder than any lecture, any words. Always good example. So you have to make good example as well, okay? No matter what you say, if you don't make good example, people don't follow. Mm? Okay. Well, of course, then you would say to me, then how come Buddha make good example? Jesus Christ made good example, etc. Other master make good example. How come other people don't follow and they did the opposite? This is a different story, okay? Life after life is like that. Humans are being poisoned before they were born, yeah? And uh, equipped or uh, installed with many unfavorable instruments inside, inside their being, either in their mind or in their body. Therefore, not many people can follow the Buddha's example. Many people want to be monks or nuns, but not everybody can because of these instruments that have been placed in their beings. Hormone is one, for example. It's not what we wanted. It's just given to us without asking, maybe asking. Before we came here, of course, we had choices. Yeah, that's not fair to say without asking. We did give permission for whatever happened to us. We have consented to them. We had to. Otherwise, we cannot exist in this world which is imperfect. We have to be imperfect in order to be here. It is like that. Just like in some country, the law are very strict. Yeah, you cannot wear this, you cannot wear that. Uh, you have to maybe cover your face, yeah? Then you have to abide by that, whether or not you like it. Whether or not the weather is too hot for you, you still have to wear that. And even if you foreigners, a long time ago, now it's less restriction, but before. If you're a girl, for example, and you went to some very restricted countries, and you don't wear what they wear, then you'll be in big, big trouble. Big trouble. Even if not with the law, then with the people in that country. Yes? Or in some other country, their laws are different. Everything is better now, of course. Yeah, I'm glad. But in some other country, you cannot even go out. Even Taiwan, long time ago, before I came here, Taiwanese people cannot go out if you're single, if you're young and single. And more, more con uh, condition, uh, if you don't have uh, properties, yeah, and you're single, then uh, you can't have visa to go to America. Taiwan, uh, before I came, uh, a single person cannot go to America. Very restricted law, unless you maybe have a really good job, you know, that they're sure you're coming back to Taiwan and not going to America and marry there and stay there or do something there. I don't know why. Uh, Taiwanese people are so nice. Uh, we should welcome them everywhere. huh? Now, wow, you go anywhere. Five years uh, visa, six year visa. Whoa and go to Europe, no visa, wow. <laughs> when I first came here, I wanted to take even a couple, even monks or nuns to go to America with me, do some lecture, not allow. And I have one, only one can go. I don't know why, I can't remember how she can go to America with me, only one. She was a nun at that time, she was a nun, so she went with me to, to America because she speaks English very well. Maybe that's why, and they reckon that in case she gets lost in America, she still can survive because she speaks English. She can get a job, and she can be uh, contributing to <laughs> American society, for example, like that, and not taking social benefit, yeah? And nowadays, we advertise on our TV that immigrants are really a good contributors to any society, economy, hmm? So, Nowadays, it's better. Everybody welcome refugees, every country taking in more immigrants, and the law has become more relent 
Yeah, wonderful. I love it so much. Our society, our world, keep getting better all the time in all aspects. A lot of vegan food everywhere, vegan restaurants and mushrooming everywhere. Vegan distributors, vegan producers are mushrooming all over the planet. And soon we will not be able to find any meat eater here, and that's what I like to see. Yeah. Yeah. It will be like a barbarous <laughs> action, deed, if you eat animals in the future. Just like now, we look upon human eating like barbarous, yeah? Immoral, unbefitting to the uh, civilization. It's getting better, much better. I hope and I think sooner or later everyone on this planet will realize that they're doing wrong by killing weaker and meeker beings to eat. Animals, they're defenseless, they're harmless. So this is the act of immoral to begin with. Not to talk about spiritual practice or merit or heaven's uh, rewarding or anything. Huh? It's immoral to harm someone who is weaker than you, who is defenseless, who is innocent, and who is harming you in no way. Any civilization should be based on this and nothing else. Then our world will be a paradise. I mean, in real. Hmm? Oh, I think my calendar should stop. <laughs> now, we go back to Lord Mahavira, our good and compassionate Lord. But this is too extreme for me. I don't wish any master to ever have to undergo this kind of ascetic life, which is so filled with suffering like this. Not necessary at all. No, my calendar is coming again. Well, why not, huh? Who cares? You want calendar? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This just makes me think right now that our world is sadistic, truly. You see, who's the most famous master on our planet right now? The past master. Who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. His life of a saint, of public preaching life, how long? Three years, more or less. And people still worship him now, 2,000 plus years after his nirvana, his home going. Why? Tell me. Anybody? Because they realized that it, he was speaking the truth. He represented the truth all that time. And fine, fine. But why? He didn't talk so long. He has only three years, more or less, to speak. And other master, like Buddha, he talks for many years. He lived until 80-something. He preached maybe 40-something years. How come? Buddhist followers are not as many as Christian followers. Tell me. Because he sacrificed or himself. Uh-huh, yeah. Because he suffered. That is a very sadistic penchant of humans' mentality. Don't you agree? Yes. Yeah. So many masters has to suffer one way or another in order for people to look upon it. Wow, oh, he is worthy of sainthood, of being a saint. You name it, all the masters suffer. Wow, you cannot imagine how they suffer. I don't want to talk about it because it would joke me. <sighs> the more you read about the stories of the masters who had to suffer so much, the more you just, you just might lose faith in humanity. So. It's better we don't know. It's better you don't know. I read too many. I still cry whenever I remember how Jesus has to suffer. 
from his birth on already. He has to lay in the manger of the animals in the cold winter night on a foreign land. His parents have to run to protect him like criminals. They done nothing wrong. And Jesus was just born. He wasn't born yet, was already condemned to death if he was to be born there, you know, in his native area. So his parents had to run. Well, you know the story, so I don't want to talk to make my calendar longer. And for example, yeah, many people, I don't mean you or anyone in particular, but for what I knew, many stories, any master who practiced ascetism, or maybe better still, don't eat anything, <laughs> then a lot of people come and worship them, at least believing in them that he or she is really a worthy practitioner. So many people dropped out of my group, our group, <laughs> because I'm not looking like an ascetic. And I don't even look like a monk. Okay. I wasn't born to be looking like an ascetic monk this lifetime. I'm born for you. Okay. I was born for this type of people who look through the clothes and the skin to see something more valuable than just the price of the material that I wear. Got that? Yes. Mm. This lifetime, this period of our life, of our earth, people have too much karma, very heavy karma. All the saints told you that, Kali Yuga, okay, meaning the dark age. Therefore, we had so many big tragedy, yeah, events like wars, or oh, millions of millions, tens of millions of people die, and then plagues, yeah. Also millions of people die, or at least hundreds of thousands of people die. And again, epidemic. And then again, war. And then disaster of big scale, natural or man-made. So only the desperate souls will accept redemption if they find it. And they will hang on to it. These desperate souls, they truly are wiser than the non-desperate. They will not see anything outwardly that obstructs their faith and their determination to escape from this suffering world, which they see and perceive and know that it is ephemeral to begin with. So it doesn't matter what the Master looks like, as long as their souls perceive that she speaks, he talks the truth, they will follow to the end, sincerely and diligently. And for these souls, I might have appeal. For ordinary souls, they just look for personalities, they look for appearance, they look for demonstration, they look for, yeah, whatever, you know it, right? Yes. So they will not be able to maintain their determination and faith as long as the so-called master that they have seen or wanted to believe in don't fit their small little frame. There are bigger frames, smaller frames, little frames to fit different photos, okay? So only, <laughs> only the one who likes the big photos use a big frame. And the little one, they, they used to with small things, they don't like big photos. They have a small frame, and that fit them for now. It's good. Eh? You like larger picture. Hmm? Yeah. So you see, our world is like that. They don't believe in happiness. They don't believe in good luck, redemption, 
They believe in hell and evils and bad luck and all this kind of stuff. So when the master come with all positive energy, say, wow, you will be saved. Don't worry. I take all your karma and your other five, six, and nine generation. I will also take care. Don't worry. And they look at the master like, what? Are you joking? You must be kidding, right? <laughs> yeah. But if other people say, oh, you sinner, you better be repentant, uh, be more ascetic, avoid more pleasure, you know, then you might be able to be liberated. Then they believe that. They go home and kneeling on end or maybe prostrating in the snow, in the dirt, in the rough stony road for hundred miles on end and to redeem themselves. Even though the whole life they did nothing wrong, just reciting Buddha's names, for example, then they believe that will be the redeeming kind of path. But the Master is too easy. Come to me only, yeah, and I will help you. Like Jesus said, come to me, those weary and laden, I will quicken you. I will lift you up. How many people follow him? Not too many. And they even killed him in such a cruel, gruesome way, inhumane way. He did nothing wrong. He never said anything wrong even against the government or anybody. So you can see, this world is not fit for us to live in. We don't like all this kind of sadistic kind of mentality and the trend of society. We believe only in suffering and sorrow and pain. Yeah? So any poor master who wear tattered clothes or eat once a day or better eat uh, once a week or maybe not eat at all, then okay, maybe I will follow you or maybe not even. It's not like, okay, the whole world follow that, then it's not too bad. Not too bad. There were many saints who ate nothing in our history. In Taiwan, there's also one. She was a nun. Her name was Fu Wei Ni Si. And she lived also in Meoli, near our old ashram. And she ate nothing for a long, long time. She drank only a little water. Yeah. And she doesn't even preach. She uses hand to teach you, like tell you to recite the name of the Buddha. Her teaching is very simple. But it's good enough. If you follow her, she will have the blessing for your Buddha's name. Not just like anybody tell you who recite the Amitabha Buddha name, but it's her who told you, because she is powerful. She is pure. She's devoted to the Buddhas and the Buddha's teaching, and she lives up to it. She's powerful. She's liberated soul. She's a saint in a human form. So if she told you, even with her hand only, to recite Amitabha Buddha, then that Amitabha Buddha's name will have no end blessing. Then if you recite it, you will really be blessed and be liberated. That's the difference, okay? But how many people in Taiwan follow her? Every Sunday, maybe one bus or two bus will come there and just bow to her and uh, see her hands and then eat some of her food and then went home. She already has nothing anymore, so people cannot suspect that she will benefit something if you follow her. Nothing. I mean, ascetic. To the maximum already, she wear old clothes, tattered clothes, always patching here and there. She don't have any new clothes ever since she became a nun, I guess. Because her clothes always been patched again and again and again. And she doesn't have that many. I saw that. I went to see her also. So you see what I'm saying? There's no end to demand of humans' <laughs> a requirement. You have to do this in order for me to follow you. You have to do that in order for me to follow you. But maybe I don't even follow you, because I don't want to. Because I like to still, 
eat meat. I still like to drink alcohol. I still like to do this and that. The thing that you did not allow, <laughs> or you encourage me to quit. I don't want to. That is a problem. You see, humans they ruin themselves. They spoil themselves. They do what they want, even though they know that is bad. Some don't know. That's okay. Excusable. Nobody teach them. Okay, we understand. But some know for sure. Still don't do it. So heaven is limitless, immense, but <laughs> almost empty. Hell is so tight, <laughs> small, but a lot squeezing in there. And bodhisattva saints, Buddhas are all over in the ten directions, life after life. They are helping to rescue humans and to lift them up, but still life after life, we still have full of humans on this planet. I just hope this time, sooner, we will be only saints, or at least harmless beings. Oh my God, I talk about four beings, right? We only one yet. Only first one, right? Yes. Ay -ya. You better <laughs> stay until next week, <laughs> because... <laughs> yeah, okay, never mind. So we talk about friends. Of course, friends include bodhisattvas and Buddhas and saintly being good friends, huh? San Tzu Su, huh? Good, intelligent, wise friends, okay? If you have friends in, by your side, it's good for you. But mind you, friends it doesn't always mean they always agree with you, even though it's right, okay? If something they have not known before, maybe they don't take but that doesn't mean they are enemies, okay? Now, as a friend, oh, sorry, I think I have no time for you today, we just... <laughs> <laughs> Let you take a rest. <laughs> <laughs> now, the second type, uh, maybe friend has more than just that, no? Friends, sometimes they are not around you. Sometimes they just happen to be with you for a short while, but then they introduce to you some good teaching, a uh, name of a master, and it awakens you some something. And then you will go and find more of that teaching or that master. These are also friends, yes. And uh, we have also invisible friends, yes, like the angels who protect you. If you're good, more angels protect you. If you're not even an angel around, they cannot do anything, or they just disappear. They're not allowed to help you when you're not worthy. If you keep the five precepts alone clearly, then okay. At least have five angels, okay? And you have also not just angels, but protectors. If you're more worthy, you have protectors. Yes. When you retreat, you have more protectors. Yes. When I am in retreat, I have more protectors. But now they use only uh, OU protectors, not the ordinary one. Ordinary one also hang around. But the OU, the Osku goddesses, they came. Every time, just two days. Every group, two, two days only. It depends on my retreat. If it's less troublesome, then they give me maybe 20, 26. Okay? Normally 26 is around, but 28 or 30 or plus. It depends on how rough uh, the subject of my retreat at that time then I have more or less of protectors. The protectors, they know everything. They can tell me many things, just sometimes I don't have enough time to listen. Too busy, busy outside things. Yeah. And sometimes I know too late. Yeah. But it doesn't matter, I'm okay. Yeah. It should be okay. <laughs> now, there are another group of people, they are neutral, okay? They no harm to you and no good to you. Yeah. Sometimes they could help you a little bit of small things, but they don't harm you in any case, okay? So sometimes you work with them, you feel less effective. But these people, at least they don't harm you, eh? Mm. So, so we don't have much to talk about these people. They can hang around you or not hang around you, but it's just maybe decoration or just harmless, just to have company or something, but nothing much going on but nothing bad, okay? Yeah. 
Of course, if they are around and sometimes you need something, they can also lend a hand, yeah? And slowly, life after life, they do that. They become your friend in the end, sometime in your journey, if you are still here. If you liberate it, then of course not. And these people who help you, we will also help to be uplifted to some degree. Huh? So not much to talk about these neutral people. We call them neutral. And now we talk about enemies. Enemy has two types. Outside your circle, enemy, and inside your circle, enemy, we call secret enemy. Because these enemies you can't suspect. The enemy outside, of course, they do things very obviously against you or, or bad for you, yeah, or you don't get on well with them, you have often trouble understanding each other or working with each other. They could kaput some of your project, yeah, or your enthusiasm, your ideas and all that. Yeah, that's very obvious and they're not friendly to you. This is easier to deal with. You can escape if you know, if you can, yes. Or if when the time comes, they leave you. Secret enemy is more difficult. They are with you all the time. Either family members or workers together in your company or your workmates or your friends, so-called friends. They seem to be with you in a lot of things, harmless things, small things, which doesn't destroy you, which doesn't ruin you. But when it comes to some big thing, boom, then they turn against you very quick, and you have no time to even counteract. They may join your group or your company or your volunteer group even, and just looking like they're very, very, very diligent and very supportive. But no, they do things to harm you. They split the togetherness in your group by some words, some action, a leading people go against you. But no one notice, slowly, slowly, or big, yeah, or quickly. It depends on situation. And they also ruin your reputation, your name, your company, your business, your ideal, your faith. They make you even don't want to practice anymore. These are worst enemies. They could be your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your boyfriend. Capish? Maybe they follow you in the same faith, look like. But in some way, visibly or invisibly, they slowly wear you out of your faith as well, by their own example, their own action, or their own argument. They make you lose your way. These are the worst enemies. They make you lose your faith. These are the worst enemies. Mostly they are secret enemies because they are with you. You trust them. That is the problem. If they are outsider or they just come and go, then okay, you're here, there, and you forget tomorrow, but if they are with you every day or often, then their influence are not to be overlooked. You must use your wisdom, your intelligence, to discriminate between friends and enemies, otherwise your life will be in trouble. We have only one life here now that we know. Next life we don't know. We don't know if we are still human, if we see a master or not, if we can practice or not, or if we have more family member obstructing us, more bad enemies obstructing us, or we will become animals, or some gods, or some fairy in heaven enjoying too much and don't want to practice anything. Some heaven, it's just too low and just give you enjoyment. You have no motivation, no push to go higher. Hmm? In every group, they are prone to be one enemy like that. Mostly, in most groups, there will be one. And you have to be really be vigilant. In our group also, we have. So I have to keep trimming it, okay? For your sake as well. I will not abandon them if they don't do anything bad for others outside in the society. If they still are vegetarian, uh, meditation, off and on, okay, fine but they should not be near you, because they will give bad influence, okay? By their action, by their talk, by their invisible influence, by energy, yeah? Therefore, I'm trimming, 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 okay, huh? Please don't criticize me.
Okay? It's getting smoother now. I often talk now without any bad interruption recently, and I'm very grateful for that. And I'm also glad for you. Okay? Mm. The enemy, the outspoken one, the one that lives by your neighbor next door or uh, the one in your company, you know, they talk sour about you or sarcastic about you. All that stuff is not much, okay? You go home, you forget them. Maybe still angry or upset a little bit, but they don't harm you as much as the secret enemy. Because the secret enemy, they can destroy you without you even knowing. And then they make you ill also. And the worst thing is that they make you lose your belief in the right path to follow, right master to believe in. That's the worst thing you could encounter. Or just like Devadatta, he always tried to obstruct the Buddha to teach others. He didn't want anybody to follow the Buddha for liberation. Not only he jealous with the Buddha's fame, not that the Buddhas even care about anything, just his job, his mission, his destiny to be an open Buddha like that, to teach others according to his vows and his power. Not that he cared to be famous. If he cared to be famous, he would have be, go back to be a king, have so many servants, many concubines, beautiful, most beautiful women around him. They select, you know. If you're a king, they select all the best-looking women in the country, young, maiden, to be at your side for your pleasure, to uh, lessen your stress, to bear many children, to enlarge the royal household so that you can use these children to uh, solidify your power or to solidify friendship, support, from neighbor countries. This is like a job also. Having many women also like a job. <laughs> the king might not even like it. Not every man like many women. Most men very faithful. One woman is good enough for him. Yeah, and then they build up their relationship together and they have not just uh, like desire for each other, but they have obligation for each other, they have respect for each other, they have things in common and go together on the life journey as a best friend. So most men, if they found a good woman, uh, trustworthy and nice to him, faithful to him, then he's happy all his life. He don't even look at anybody else. In America, they make a survey that 90 plus percent of American USA, yeah? American men are very respectful and loving to their wives, really love their wives and respect their wives. I think everywhere it was almost the same. They just didn't do the survey in Taiwan. The myth about men love many women is not really true. Some maybe, yeah, some maybe, but not all men are like that. I saw it around me all the time, yes. I don't know, I, maybe I told you this story already, but. I could tell you again, and you pretend you didn't listen before, huh? <laughs> uh, I was in Spain, and I went to a, a restaurant to eat, because they have a vegan uh, taco. Taco is a special Mexican food, yeah? They wrap it in a crispy corn chapati-like, yeah? And it's very delicious, yeah? yeah? They make it vegan. I love Mexican food. <laughs> Whenever I'm in Mexico, I, I really have to go out and find some real Mexican foods, vegan, to eat. And sometimes I made it at home, and now I don't have time to even eat, not to talk about make it myself. <laughs> I prefer to cook. Yeah, I like to cook. It's like an artistic expression also, you know? You put a lot of color things, you arrange and stuff, and then you put enough space and condiment, and it suits your palate, and after you're done, you enjoy it. It's like a, it's like a gift from heaven and earth, yeah, from your talent and your, your love and the love of all the food that offer it to you. You feel grateful and it's also your own creation, so you feel very satisfied, even you don't eat a lot of that. 
And sometimes you go out, eat a lot, but you don't feel like satisfied. That's the problem, okay? Because it's not love that put in there. I keep telling the kitchen to put love, you know, like in Sihu, to put love in the food so it would taste good. I like Taiwan, but I really love Europe. Everything clean and tidy everywhere, every country. Even a ruin. For example, if you go to Spain, don't let me forget the restaurant, okay? I might, take, I might go on forever. Spain is big, you know, very big. So if I go around Spain, that's enough for another month. Yeah. If you go to Spain, you will notice people there are very tidy. Everywhere is so tidy. Even if a ruin, ruin means a house has been built a long time ago and nobody lives there anymore and the roof is gone, the wall is uh, half broken, still you don't see any mess there. Even if I look at the ruin in Spain, I love it so much. It feels so clean and somehow very endearing. Yeah. Or Italy also. But Spain gave a deep impression to me. Really, every ruin is like a piece of uh, a special art for me. Yeah. Sometimes I take picture, go home, have a look, <laughs> and and I'm imagining how it was before. And I thought if I have a time and chance and talent, I would maybe buy that piece of ruin and the land around it and rebuild it again to make it beautiful. And my cave in Spain, it was just a cave, a lot of rock and rough, and it's not accessible. But afterward, I hired people to come in, move all the unnecessary rocks and trim all the trees because it's, it's a cave only. Nothing, after we, we remove everything, I still put some artistic piece of uh, uh, assembly things, assembling some rocks, you know, around it, and then I build some column, something half high or, or two-third high, or make it beautiful, and half of the wall, oh, I should have taken photo, but I never thought I would go out again. <laughs> I didn't have anything there. I don't have camera, nothing. I had a canvas and some painting stuff. I thought I was going to paint it, and then I never had a chance. I had to leave. Uh, the cave is still there. Maybe one day, if I go there, I will go there and take photo. It's far away from any human quarter. It takes maybe 40 minutes driving on a mountain road to reach the first house that you can see. I loved that place. No water, no electricity, but I can have a little stream somewhere, or we can buy water, bring it in. You don't need much there. Water, you also need less. My dog don't care if, if I smell. <laughs> and if you don't do much, you meditate a lot, you don't really smell. And you need only a wet towel to make yourself clean every day. And I don't need electricity. I buy a lot of these uh, sun lamp, solar lamp, and mm, just uh, stick in the ground everywhere, big one, small one. Depends on, and then I use it as a flashlight, as a light for the night when I have to go out somewhere. That's one of the best time in my life. Just like in India, when I had nothing. I love having nothing. <laughs> you just feel so free. If you don't believe me, try it. I don't mean absolutely nothing. You have some simple food, you know, that you can take with you. I eat just canned food. I bring only canned food in my cave, but I have a couple of assistants because of dogs, and sometimes they bring me good food, sometimes not. And you don't need a lot. You bring a lot of canned food there and some, something that can last long. You can bring oil to cook because I have an oven, uh, a heater, you know, and they use oil. And then on top of it, it's very hot. You could cook things with it. So in winter is the best. You can warm yourself, and then you can cook at the same time. In winter also, you don't need a lot. I was there in winter. So I don't know what's the summer like. Summer probably you have more water. Summer and other rainy season, more water from the, from the waterfall. Yeah, when it rains, it's like a waterfall coming down. In winter, you have ice because you just put a bucket of water outside. And then <laughs> when the rain comes, it fills it. I bring some plastic, like a swimming pool for kids blow it up, and then the water can contain in it. Because I cannot carry heavy things, so these kind of uh, 
you know, like balloon, you blow it up and it becomes like a container. It's flat though, but you can have water in it. And if it's winter, the water is still there, it becomes ice. You can also refresh yourself. <laughs> if you don't want to sleep, you chop a piece of ice, put it on your face, and then you wake up. Summer or rainy season, you stay under the waterfall, it wake you up in no time. <laughs> you don't need electricity. But outside where I have uh, some mobile, mobile unit for the workers, for the attendants and for the dogs, uh, we have uh, solar panels, so we can charge the phone if we need. Very civilized indeed, you don't know that. <laughs> and if you have more solar panels, you can watch TV. I had a Spanish mountain, also no electricity, no water, but I have TV. I can wash my clothes with a small washing machine. I can have even a dishwasher. <laughs> and w I collect all the rain water whenever I can. But that's the workers, they do it, you see? They bring big tank inside, we cannot do that. And they have many solar panels. In winter, I can even have a heater. I live in a small hut, uh, one meter seventy long, and one meter fifty wide. I couldn't find any better, that's why. It was Christmas time, and that's the only shop that opened, and that's the only thing available, so I have to take it. And I was very happy in it. I have a small television inside. <laughs> I have a heater inside. You have to use uh, the echo heater, you know? Not a normal heater, but very flat, ceramic. I love that cave. If I have a chance and it's easy, I would stay in that cave again. I love it. It's a natural cave. The water run in and then some soft earth just loosen up and then all the stone come down to the floor. So when we come in, we have to move all the stone. But then it becomes flat, you see? And I put some gravels in it, and then build some little, you know, like half ruined Roman columns and stuff like that, with hand, with this rock that I found around it. So beautiful. I found it beautiful. For me, uh, it was beautiful. Yeah, after I decorated it like that, and I have a tent put inside, but the 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 road is flat in some area, but not flat enough for one ten. So sometimes I sleep here, and then in the morning I was down there somewhere else. <laughs> Almost. If there's no ten, I will run into the gravine and under there. It's not very deep, but it could hurt you. Yeah. So a ten is also useful, <laughs> even though just a zip, but it stops you, and then you wake up. You know, it's a, hey, it's not it's not where I want to be. <laughs> So uh, around is all tree and bushes and birds and squirrels and rabbits and stuff like that. Oh, beautiful place. There's nothing really, just that. But <laughs> for me, it's beautiful because it's so quiet. But in that cave, I have the biggest ever realization. And the gift that I gave some of you also from that time. All right then. Oh, let's go to a restaurant. <laughs> I went to a restaurant after I leave the cave. Nobody would believe that such an Asian, a petite woman, go into such a wilderness cave where there's no water even, and no electricity, sit there alone with a tent, doing nothing. Ah, <laughs> what business? And you were young even, not so old like now. Maybe they accepted you old and fed up with <laughs> society, get retirement money and go there just to quiet down for a while. There's not even a picture of Jesus or Buddha there so that you can say you go there worshiping or praying or what. <sighs> Difficult to explain, right, to the society what I was doing in there. Must be something that is not <laughs> suitable <laughs> for the normal life. And then I fence around it even. I, we explain that it's for the dog not to go out and, and eat the, the wild hog, but they don't believe that. Yeah. Okay, so the Chinese say San Si Liu Chi. Chui hao chiu si? Pao la, bu si zhou la, pao la. Pao kuai la. Of all of the 36 um, 
strategy of Chinese, the best is to run in that case. So I did. I listened to the Chinese wisdom. Yeah? <laughs> Master doesn't always know everything. You always, always have to learn because you live in this world. Okay? You have to learn uh, to deal with this world in this world way. Yeah? You cannot use heaven words to deal here. It doesn't apply. Huh? Okay. Uh, when you go to a different country, you don't expect to have a hot dog or cold dogs or whatever, you know, everywhere, like in America. Huh? You eat what the native have for you. And you respect the law. Whatever law you know in that country, you abide by that law. In heaven, you don't need to want anything, or even whatever you want is already there for you. And even if you want anything extra just for creativity's sake, you just thought about it, it's right there. But here you're not allowed to use this. I'm not allowed to use so many things. I'm so frustrated sometimes, so frustrated. Because the thing is, the king of this world, now worry, if you come down with all your splendor and magical power, then every one of this planet will just follow you, go back to heaven, and he has no subjects to rule. What's the use of a king without any subject, right? So you have to sign contract. You can't walk in the air, you can't walk on the water, you can't fly, you can't go through walls, you can't open door without any keys from afar, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't heal the sick, of, I mean openly, so many things you cannot. The Master can many everything, but here cannot. These people have sadistic tendency. They want the Master to suffer or to be in poor condition or pain or sorrow in any kind, or short of all comfort that they want to have, they themselves want to have, but they don't want Master to have anything like that. You understand? No wife, no kids, no family, no friend, no possession, no clothes, no food even. Eat food has to be very poor food. Yeah. Walk bare feet, no shoes, yeah, no clothes would be best. Yeah, that kind of master that people want. The master has all heaven and earth, and they expect the master has to be poor, suffer, pain, sorrow, all kind. Meanwhile, they themselves uh, ask the Master blessing so that they are rich, healthy, <laughs> happy, famous, huh? uh, marry well to a good family, yeah? pass exams, or has a good job, blah, blah, blah. But the Master not allow any of that. That's why I told you this world is miserable and sadistic. Okay? You see or not? Am I right? Yes. So what did I say about restaurant? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I went there because of Mexican food. Oh, sorry, no, no, that's not the one. I went to the Thai restaurant next to the Mexican food. I don't always go, but sometimes at home, uh, food is no good. Yeah, I haven't got time to buy any vegetable yet, so if I pass by a restaurant, I eat first <laughs> before I collapse in the supermarket. <laughs> And then uh, there was a Thai restaurant, I forgot, yeah. And then I sit on one table and a couple sit next to me, yeah? Yeah. And they were talking, yeah? The men sit next to me, yeah? And the lady sit in front, almost opposite me, because the two tables next to each other. I sit here, she sit there. And she was kind of making conversations, oh, where you come from? <laughs> this is a very famous <laughs> sentence that I, <laughs> I wish I never have to hear it. <laughs> story of my life, because if you tell them where you come from, then they start to ask another, how long have you been there? <laughs> Were you born there? You married there? Uh, etc., etc. Uh, did you study there? Your parents are still there? Hey, uh, do you have sister and brother still there? Hey, no end. You understand me? I don't know what is in me that they keep asking me no end. What's I got to do with them, whether I marry or not, or I marry in Vietnam, or I marry in America, or wherever? Yeah? And then what car I have? How did I get here? <laughs> uh, do I have long-term visa, short-term visa? Do I have a house here? How big is the house? How many rooms? Do I have a swimming pool or not? <laughs> <laughs> you understand? And how big is the garden? 
What kind of trees? You know, do you plant for trees and flowers? Okay, the couple. Yeah, she asked me again, you know, this kind of big question, where are you from? Okay, then I have to oblige to tell her. And then how long you been here? Then I'm obliged again to tell her. And she asked me then about Spain, you know, because I lived there at that time. I said, I live here. Okay, so she asked me about the weather, the people, how comfortable it is, because she came from uh, maybe Scotland or England, I forgot, okay? And she wanted to buy an apartment or a house here and live here. I said, then why don't you? It's good weather all year round, and you see where we live here is next to the sea and uh, healthy, and you have many restaurants and a lot of foreigners. You will not feel like a stranger in <laughs> a foreign land here. Everybody speaks English here. I told her that. I told her what I knew. I said, we have Italian, Spanish, Mexican, Thai, uh, Chinese, uh, uh, all the restaurant, okay? Yeah. Pakistan restaurant, even all kind of restaurant here. Indian, uh, Thai, you know, uh, all kind of restaurant. And you, you'll be spoiled with choice and you will enjoy it here. Uh, I enjoyed it there too, of course, I have to tell you the truth. Not that like good thing, I don't care, you know, I'm not that ascetic, okay? I'm not Lord Mahavira at that time. I'm sorry for him, but... <laughs> yeah, and then so we were talking, eh? and then she said she wanted to buy a house here, but her husband doesn't want to. He likes where he is. And she just feels very frustrating. So I said, oh, he's a very lawyer, that's why, you know? She said, what? He's so stubborn and want to stay in that rainy and old town and you say he's a lawyer? I said, yeah, he likes what he has and he doesn't ask for more and he's happy with what he has and he's loyal to his place. Oh, and then she was kind of uh, agreeing with me, she said, oh, I didn't think it that way. Ah, I said, yeah, you should, because that's why he's loyal to you. You marry how long already, you know? She said, yeah, thirty-something years. I see, you see what I mean? And he's still interested in you. He keeps talking to you. He doesn't look left or right, nothing. He doesn't even look as a pretty girl like I am next to him. <laughs> yeah, such a beautiful young chick, he didn't even care. <laughs> so I, I pointed out to her, so she's less you know, upset about him. He said, wow, I never thought about it this way. I thought he's very uh, stubborn and very close-minded, but now you tell me he's a lawyer. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Where did you get all this wisdom? You know, because we got talking more and more, and he, she asked me many other questions, and I answered her. I said, where? You look so young. Why? You're so wise. Where did you get all this wisdom? I said, well, you know, you travel around and people teach you things, <laughs> just like that. And that's it. I want to tell you that because they are not only Americans' husband, but other people, other country husband, they're also very loyal to their wives. And I'm very, very happy about that. Mm, in Spain, for example, that is, that is from Scotland or England, yeah, okay? In Spain also, wherever I talk to some men or, or for anything, I normally don't go anywhere, meet any man. It just went maybe in the restaurant to the waiter or the taxi or the shop or some people who work in my house, you know, to repairing things. They always uh, talk very highly about their wives. Always, my wife this, my wife that. Yeah, my wife here, my wife there. Seems very respectful and endearing, you know? And I'm, I was very happy. So if any of you women complain about your husband, I think you should also introspect your style, you know, your lifestyle. Whether or not you cook too casually and you do not put enough love in there or not enough care to please your husband's palate, whether or not you listen to his complaint or his requirement, some small thing, uh, or, or you are too bossy, yeah? <laughs> You take care of all the small things, yeah? <laughs> like who should be the next president? And you give him big things like, where do we go shopping next, next morning? <laughs> uh, 
and whether or not you take care about his feeling, okay? Just by the way, okay, huh? Whether or not you still respect and love him, okay? Or trying, at least. Whatever it is, I think you got the upper hand at home because you put all the men at home, take care of children and household, and you are here. <laughs> all of you, the women. And these are the brave and rare escapists that could <laughs> be in front of, of my face, you know, every Sunday. And they take turn even. I don't see uh, the same man every weekend, but I see the same woman all the time. Please be merciful, okay? We Kuan Yin practitioner, huh? we have also compassion and fairness. Yeah, let him also take a chance, okay? To see his master. Okay, I don't want to talk about that again. I know what you do at home. Don't have to tell me. I know everything. Master knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Women mostly have more common sense. That I understand, okay? But common sense doesn't always mean intelligence or wisdom, okay? We must have love and wisdom as well. To, to be right all the time is not good for you, for your love relationship, okay? You have to be also sometimes feminine, yeah? Sometimes very cooperating, okay? And let your husband also be right some, sometimes, <laughs> okay? In some small matter, okay? Let him feel <laughs> like a man, huh? And don't use all that excuse to, to say, you don't know anything anyway, you stay home, I go listen to Master. Huh? Don't use all his shortcomings to make advantage for you, to do anything you want or go anywhere you want and neglecting his feeling and his privilege and his right, okay? Especially spiritual. Got that? You say, yes, but behind me, you do know, I don't know. Let other people practice, also meritorious for you. That man really, he just focused to talk to his wife. Even his wife talked to me, and then because of concerning both, so he, he turned around, you know, a second and said, yeah, yeah, like that, and then he turned back to her again. You imagine such a beautiful chick like me, huh? <laughs> Young and beautiful, and he didn't care. And his wife already older, just as like you, maybe like me now, but that was ten years ago. I was still <laughs> pretty, <laughs> just joking with you. What I mean is, uh, in the restaurant also many other people, but he just focused on his wife, talking to her about what. I didn't really listen, but I mean, think that it's not really important, just only both of them <laughs> interested in, you know? So maybe after that she look him, with different eyes, she will have more respect and love for him, which is good for both of them, you know? If you love your husband and respect your husband, also good for you, because he is happy. And he's happy, he will make you happy too. You see? And happy atmosphere, yeah? Mm. What for? You always have to be right, okay? If not necessary. Well, there are many ways to be right. It don't have to always be uh, so rough. There was a story about um, a couple, you know, their neighbor, the two neighbors uh, were going together in, in a pilgrim somewhere, and they talk about their neighbor's couple behind their back, of course. Uh, one of the uh, uh, pilgrim, one of the men said to the other man, he said, you know what, my neighbors, the, they never argue, never. The husband and wife, always very harmonious together, peaceful. My God, I wish uh, my, uh, my marriage life also like that. And he asked, how about you? You know, how about the other guy? He said, oh, I, you know, marriage is always like that. I don't believe what you told me about the neighbor's couple who never argue. I don't believe that. I don't believe you. He said, okay, after this, we come back to my village. I invite you to my house. And then you stay there a while longer, and then we go visit the neighbors, and then you will believe me that such couple in perfect unison and harmony exist. Okay, fine. After the pilgrim, they came back, and then, of course, they go visit the neighbor house. And then uh, uh, the, the neighbor asked the husband about their marriage, the neighbor's husband, the good couple husband, 
about their marriage, how they managed to stay all these years without even one harsh word or one disagreement. Uh, it's a very easy, and oh, we are just like that. Yeah. So, so the, the friend, the visitors uh, say, what do you mean like that? Can you tell us an example? Uh, he said, well, not really. I don't really have an example because we just live on every day and we don't even think about nothing. And we just live like that. So he said, okay, okay. Uh, the, the neighbors who introduced are not happy because the visitor did not believe him. So he said, you'll stay here longer with me and then we will find out, okay? Maybe these couple, they're just too natural, too shy, or they don't even think that they are in harmony because they're always like that. So you stay longer. And after a while, you know, uh, they see the husband going out uh, to, to, to do something. They have a little hen, you know, coo -coo -coo -coo. the chicken, yeah? But who doesn't coo in the morning? <laughs> so they think, uh, maybe they need a new pot in the house. They could do an extra pot. So they, they talk to each other. The wife said they should go and sell this hen and then buy a pot. The husband, okay, immediately, no argument. So he took the hen, go outside. But then on the road, somebody else wanted to sell him something in exchange for the hen. So the husband buy that. Maybe buy a, a little a dog or something, I'll bring it home. And the wife also say, ah, this is very good, ah, good idea. Ah, you bought a dog, ah, now we have a little company. I don't really need that extra pot anyway. I don't know why I talk about that. Okay, good. And then later, <laughs> later on, the dog make a lot of noise, puppy, you know, pee and poo all over the house, make noise, so the wife say, oh, well, maybe we should exchange it for something else. Or you take him out and see who wants something else. I made up the story along, but it's based on the original story, okay? I forgot what, what was it that, <laughs> that he exchanged the chicken for. So uh, the husband took the dog. Of course, these are two, the neighbors and the visitor follow them and just spy, you know, quietly, the spy to see what he's doing, and then follow him back home to see what the wife's reaction. So then the husband took the dog out, and then uh, somebody wanted a dog, it's so cute. So exchange it for uh, maybe a pig, or oh, a smaller pig. Okay, it's all right. So the husband did not buy the pot anymore. I still took a pig instead, bring a pig home. And the wife said, oh, wonderful. How you know, how you know to do things? A pig is good for us. It brings luck and, ah, oh, very good, very good. <laughs> and then, so the pig stay. And then later, the pig also go all over the house because they don't have a room don't have a place for the pigman, and they make a place where the pig escape and all that, so too much trouble. And the wife didn't know how to feed the pig, never feed the pig before, so I said, oh, never mind. I think we still need to buy a pot instead of a pig. The pot we can use and we don't have to take care and don't need extra food for the pot. You know, the pig eat a lot, <laughs> so okay. The husband took the pig outside and went all over and exchanged for this and that. Always the wife said, okay, good, good, good. And then later I have to change. Finally, the, the husband took the last item, whatever that was. Okay, you imagine, whatever you say is fine with me. Outside and then on the road, he see uh, a man who was carrying a hen. That was his hen before. <laughs> <laughs> All the while, he's still here. Say, oh, what are you doing with hen? He say, well, I bought it for my kid, but he didn't like it. So I went out to see if anybody wants to exchange it or something. I said, oh, good, good. Okay, I have this. Do you want to exchange? I said, yeah, this is just what I want. Uh, I don't know what then. What else can we have? Maybe a little uh, rabbit or something? Yeah, I like it. My kid would like that. Okay, how about we swap it? So then the husband uh, took the hen back home, and the other guy took the rabbit. When uh, the the husband came home, the wife exclaimed, Wow, nice to see the hen again. My God, I miss you. Ah, you're really a good husband. You know what your wife wanted, really. So thank you so much. So everything ends happy, okay? So now the, the, hus the neighbor and the visitor came back home and discussed things. They said, you lose. 
ten dollars. You know they bet. <laughs> now give it to me. You see, they never argue. See that? <laughs> okay. This is a kind of uh, relationship. It's like a best friend, you know, best buddy, but hard to find. Yeah. Even my so-called disciple argue with me all the time, huh? many times. And not not all of them, and not not one person all the time. But they don't argue, maybe, but they did opposite things and all that. They caused some chaos and some confusion and trouble and delaying and time in loss and all that stuff. Okay, so very difficult to find such a relationship <laughs> uh, in our world. But still, you try your best, okay? Because if your house is not peaceful, it's difficult to find peace of mind. Because you face it when you sit in meditation, you always think, "Oh, what did he say? Why did he say that to me?" He should have apologized. I will make him apologize after I meditate, <laughs> after I finish this section. Ah, God, one and a half more hour. I will let him know who's right. <laughs> For example, yeah, they're always in your mind. You will go nowhere. Peaceful solution always the best. Nah? Even if you lose faith or something, who cares? So. Even if it's your enemy, you just bear with it, okay? Because mostly you love your enemy. That's the way it's arranged in this world. So that you will equalize, you know, the hatred that you had with each other formerly. That's how it goes. Life has to be about love, yeah? So if <laughs> your husband, wife, kids happen to be your enemy and you know it for sure, well, just too bad. Let's try to live on with it until maybe next life, if you come back. I don't wish you to come back, but maybe, maybe you have to. If you don't uh, long enough to go home, then this is where you stay, no? All right then. Time to go. Okay, come to. Oh, you to la, to eat fun. 我请别人跟请大家一样嘛，好不好？啊，欢喜一信就好了。好，Thank you. I said if I invite someone else, you just be happy as if it's you, okay? Then you also have the same uh, feeling without food. 女孩子太聪明了啊！哎，心生讲不惯你们是吗？讲不惯。谢谢，你才漂亮。我老了,这漂亮怎么样?弄一弄给上电影而已。上电视吗? <笑> 在家都可以转就打坐的时候转松懈一点比较舒服这是台湾哈 因为平常女孩子对女孩子没有怎么那么那么谅解了，是吗？啊，一个女孩子她出名，我们不会很喜欢的啊。嗯，女孩子比较有那种直觉，比较强啊，所以师傅讲你们懂比较多。嗯，也
，没人说，我自己只好自己站自己呢，啊，怎么办嘛，啊，哎，以前哈，上那个 ，Krishna 名字哈，他说很多都是女孩子跟着他的，嗯，旁边都收到女孩子，侍者也是女孩子，陪伴也是女孩子 ，Krishna 听说他很好看，很吸引人啊。呃，看照片也觉得不错。然后每次就要去看他的时候，哇，大家告诉大家嘛，那个时候没有那些电话什么。然后他们告诉，互相告诉，啊，太急了，忘记有时候口红啊弄到这边来，眉<笑>毛啊是眼线什么那都乱弄啊，<笑>听懂吗？那个时候也许没有，不是每个人能够有一个镜子啊，所以他们都乱弄乱搞。然后那个 Krishna 看到就会就会笑了，也许他们故意弄给他的师傅笑了，还好你们都弄成整齐。哇，每个人都有一个电风扇，哦，好厉害，很会照顾自己哦，这样好，这样我不会担心，我很对不起你们，因为。又热嘛，哎，又那么多人，挤不挤？然后还是挤，不会啦。我看你好像高兴啊，你活这么久。我也很爱你，也要保重。哇，怎么皮肤还这么漂亮？一点一点皱纹都没有。嗯，会借给你一些。你还在哈？嗯。我看很多以前的，三十三十多年以前那些兄弟姐妹都还在，啊，好，去，祝你们好吃啊，嗯 ，Bon a p p e t i t